Hello everyone. Well, here we are. This is part 10 of our uh, hardcover book from start to finish. And this is embellishing the covers. Now, in the last video, I made the covers. And in my time, that was about, oh, about an hour and a half ago. And I've spent the last hour and a half picking things out for the books. Um, now, some of you, like, for doing the trims and embellishments, like, I have a huge collection of things. I have no problem putting things together. And I know some of you are going to say, well, I can't afford to have all that stuff. I've been collecting for years. I Yes, I've gone to estates, to auctions. I've, you know, I've taken trims off of pillows, off of drapes, um, the trims off of dresses. Sorry, uh, sorry, like... Um, uh, dresses from India. I've taken the trims off of that. So my collection is huge. And even still, I will on occasion go out and buy something because, you know, you want to have different things, but I don't have to. And, and you don't have to either. And we get so caught up on buying uh, stuff to use for our journals that we forget that we have things right in front of us. And not only that, making your own trims and embellishments allows you to ha have something very unique. Um, yes, you can buy those pretty packages of embellishments from lots of brand name um, dealers and sellers, uh, you know, the get, get in the mail stuff, the um, uh, online stuff, you know, going to your craft stores. But the if you want to be different, if you want to stand out from the crowd, then do something that nobody else has. Create something that nobody else has. And so I'm only going to touch the surface of embellishing the books uh, today because uh, that in itself is it just doing uh, your own trims is a huge, huge series that I will be doing continuously. If you look, I have a playlist of where I've started to show you some different trims that you can and, and embellishments that you can create for your journals. And and so I'm going to start today showing you a few more, but I, I will uh, further enhance that series and create more to show you more opportunities uh, and just as a way for you to craft with your eyes wide open, as I always tell you, and, and look at things differently when you go to the thrift shop, you know, just run your hands through all of the clothing and see what looks different. Look for different colors, look for things that interest you as far as uh, fringy things or, and, and you've seen me cut up all kinds of stuff to, to make trims with. So, so just look at the stuff a little differently and maybe take a little bit more time and even if you come out of the store with one thing that you spent two or three dollars with that you know right away that you can turn into something uh, that's trimmable or um, like can be embellishable to, uh, to your projects, you are further ahead instead of looking for 20 things. Um, and I don't find 20 things all the time. Like you, you've seen, yes, I have some videos where I find lots of stuff, but it doesn't mean I find uh, something in uh, in. Uh, you know, an extensive amount in any particular category, unless, you know, I hit that roll of, you know, 200 yards of pink, uh, trim. Um, but, but yeah, I don't find those things all the time. It's just that I'm selective in, in what I look for and I know what to look for and I know where to look for it. So I'm going to give you an example. I, uh, have this scarf here and you saw it in my, um, video. If you watched the video where I did the uh, Forgotten Friends uh, with Kara Brandon, I used part of this scarf to um, um, extract these embellishments, these sequin embellishments to make my flowers. And my flowers are, I'll get them in a second. They're on the table here somewhere. Um, so I extracted those. Now the scarf has this um, end uh, trim, uh, these uh, fringes that are hanging down. And I cut a piece of that off. And I'll just show you it in full here. So I cut a piece of this off about an inch and a half. No, well, no, that's more like about two inches wide uh, piece of netting so that I can use that as a trim on one of my books. So if I glue this up at the top across my book, you see how that makes such a difference? Now it's still ratty at the end, but we're gonna we're gonna talk about things to make it to cover that rattiness. But this allows me to have this beautiful fringe hanging down, 
And I have the embellishments, the, the sequin embellishments on here. And it's just a start. You know, when you start seeing things like that look like this um, and using them for your journals, you, you'll be surprised at how inexpensive it can be. This this scarf will make a lot of mileage. Um, so so I can wrap this this uh, trim around the whole scarf and I still have some left over. So I'm not even using the whole width of the scarf and I'm only using two inches off the bottom. This scarf also had this um, edge along each side of it. So it goes for about two yards because it's a pretty long scarf. And and I can clean it up. There's a few threads hanging from it being a used scarf. But again, I have a nice finished trim that I can use to embellish the edge of a book. As well as use for clusters and all kinds of things. So along the edge of the top of the this book, like this is beautiful and it's glittery and shiny and um, I can use it for lots of different things, not just for, for, for my book, but I could use it to edge tags or edge a pocket or a journal card. Um, so this goes in a, you know, it, I will cut it off completely. I just left it on the scarf right now to show you, but I will cut it off completely on both sides and, and roll it onto a card. And then when I want to use it for something, I've got it. And then the same with all of these, um, um, clusters. Now I took the Sorry, I'm just going to roll that up out of the way. I, I, you know, I, when I cut up the scarf, I, I kept the larger clusters of sequins uh, to use as embellishments on things like snippet rolls and uh, making clusters and stuff. And then I used the small ones in my floral embellishments that I had uh, punched out of paper. But I kept all of the of the few inches I used of that scarf, I kept all of these appliques. So, so they could be added onto a book like this to embellish it further. It's probably not exactly what I want for this one, but it's not to say it's not the worst thing in the world, but I, you know, I can use it as um, just little spot elements on a page, or I can use it as uh, appliques onto a journal cover like this. And, and so this scarf, I think it cost me $7 from the, for this scarf. Um, it's, it's way more than what I normally pay, but when I saw it, I just fell in love with it and I knew the possibilities and, and it goes on for miles. I, I mean, I have a lot of product. I, I cut off about six inches of that scarf. I did all of those clusters yesterday and, or, um, those floral clusters. And then I have, um, all of these beautiful appliques that I can use on a variety of projects. I've already got the trim for one book with a little bit extra left over. And, you know, the other end of the scarf has the same thing at the other end. And I haven't even touched, uh, like I said, not even a quarter of the scarf. Not to mention the fact that I have that uh, edge trimming that I can also use the, the stuff that looks like this. So, so again, if you look for different things and think a little bit differently and take a little bit more time when you're out there thrifting. You know, you can come across a skirt that is going to cost you $3, but it's an A-line skirt that will give you shabby ribbons. It will give you trim around the edges. It'll give you buttons. Um, and who knows what else is on that skirt? Same with a shirt. You know, you might find a, a blouse that has really flouncy, um, uh, wide sleeves that can turn into a whole journal cover, one sleeve. So, so just take a little bit more time and I will be starting that series after this book is completely done, probably later this, uh, around June. Um, I will be starting that series of dissecting garments and how to use them and how to repurpose them into other projects. So, and that's going to be an ongoing forever series because every time I get a garment, I look at it differently as to how I can take it apart. Um, and it's, it's fun. It's always fun to, from start to finish, to take that garment apart and, and, uh, use it for, for everything possible. So, so that's just my little spiel on, on that part. So this gives you an idea of using a scarf, um, and, and how, how you can use these little embellishments. The other thing is, um, wools, fibers. Yeah. If you went to the craft store or, a, or a wool shop, 
he would pay a fortune for all of these. But if you watch in your thrift shops, you know, here, there, go to a couple yard sales, find out who, who has wool, find out anybody, any of your friends who make and uh, things that they crochet or knit, they always have leftover bits and pieces. Uh, in no time at all, you can scrounge up a good collection of different wools and fibers that you can use for your art. Now I chose this one. Uh, to go on this book because I, the color is perfect for it. Right. Um, and then I had this one and it's a, it's a, Oh, I've got it wrapped around everything here now. It's a furry fuzzy looking thing, but it's got some of this taupey Brown. It's got black and it's got beige. And I said, yeah, that, that looks like it would go nicely. So yeah, it's just fiber. This would make a great tassel if you wanted to make a tassel. But I'm going to take the two of them, this, this gold fiber and this um, fuzzy fiber. Now, the gold doesn't have a lot of gold. It, it's really quite sparse. But sometimes you don't want a lot of glitz. Now, I'm going to leave about six inches at the end here. And just taking my crochet hook, I'm going to um, first make a loop. I'm not the best crocheter in the world, but... I'm going to make a loop and start to crochet this. Now, in no time at all, you can, you can crochet a nice strand. You don't see a lot of this gold, but it's a little bit. Don't laugh at my crochet methods for you, that are, you those of you that are serious. Okay, I didn't even do that. It's a good job. Actually, now when I think about it, I want to have two gold strands. I don't want to have one. I'm going to use two. This way there'll be a little bit more gold. So starting again. <laughs> Maybe starting again. I'm going to add it onto my hook. Now I'm using quite a large hook. Uh, uh, I think it's a number six. Does it sound right? Number six either a six or a nine so it's one that you use for um, really thick wools I like it because it makes a very loose loop um, because I'm not crocheting a garment or anything where I have to worry about it being consistent I'm just making a chain a long chain and if you don't know how to crochet there are a million different videos that you can watch um, and there is another method if you really don't want to crochet or you don't want to buy a crochet hook. Crochet hooks, I can't believe how many I see at the thrift shops all the time. But in no time at all, I have this long, glittery piece that will trim along the edge of the book very nicely. Now, I've left this tail hanging that becomes like a tassel. So if I hot glue this down or, you know, well, I would probably use a hot glue gun to be honest with you. If I glue this down to here, I have a little tassel bit that's hanging off the edge of the book and I have a finished edge on this uh, fabric that is, has a rough edge and it's covering up the edge of the book. And yeah, it takes some time to go around the book and, and hot glue it down. Um, and, but if you do it carefully, you'll have this beautiful fringe. So what can I do with, now that I have this, this trim on here? Like this to me is gorgeous and it matches the book really nicely. I, I don't know if you can get the full effect of it or not, but I can, I can dangle um, charms and beads and, and make odd things. I can dangle pieces of chain on here and, and beaded necklaces and, and, you know, a necklace, you can even hook one end and then stitch on the other end and have a long necklace on here. So, so this little two pieces of wool trim and and I probably paid you know 25 cents for each one of these because they're not even full skeins but it's way more than I will ever use uh, and I, how many of these colored books am I going to make but but it there's the whole point is, is that this trim costs you nothing it's pennies to make this and for some of you are, who are going to say well yeah but I don't crochet I don't have a crochet hook I you know how am I going to get this done by tomorrow um well, first you need some wool um, or, or, or fibers of some kind, but you can also braid them. Does everybody know how to braid? If you don't, then get somebody to teach you how to braid or follow some braiding um, instructions on, on YouTube. There, there are lots of channels that will teach you how to braid. 
Um, see, I've got a bit of a mess here. Just give me a second to unhook this. Um, but yes, you, you can braid this the same way as, as, um, crocheting. As soon as you find the ends, there we go. So in this case, I might, I might want to use, uh, more than one, one piece of this, uh, fiber to braid and and I may want to use other other items like I've got uh, got this fiber sitting on the table here so it's a matter of putting three pieces together and braiding them back and forth and and I'm not going to do it with this because um, uh, th this is uh, time consuming to do but actually no I can do it I'm sorry I shouldn't say it's time consuming to do we're on on uh, YouTube. So I'm going to use two black and this one gold. And I'm just going to pinch it together. I've got a bulldog clip right here. And I'm just going to clip it together. And quickly braid. Now I would clip this to something uh, normally to show you. But just for the sake of this video, I'm just going to wrap it around a few times and it doesn't look like much right now until you actually get going with it but this is an option to do instead of crocheting a trim and it gives you a nice full looking trim I hope you can see that enough it gives you a nice full trim that you again can use to edge the edge of your book. Leave yourself a bit of a tail so that it hangs down and you've got a little bit of a, you know, kind of a boho type of look to it, you know, a little bit uh, shabby chic. Um, and, and so you can make yourself a nice trim again, just braiding instead of, of um, using um, a crochet hook. And then some of you are going to say, well, I don't have fibers to braid. I don't have any wool. Well, then tear three strips of fabric into very fine uh, strips and braid, braid the fabric. If you don't have fabric, braid ribbon. Um, there are so many things that you can... Well, I'm never going to get this untied. <laughs> there are so many things that you can use to, to braid and, and um, crochet. I, I've crocheted fabric strips. I've crocheted uh, lace. Uh, you can braid lace. Um, Lots of things that you can make trims with. I'm just going to cut this because <laughs> I'm never going to get it undone on camera. Um, another thing you can do is you can take this same braided material and I'm just going to twist it just for the sake of making it look braided. And um, you you can add it to some lace. So you can add it as a base under lace to create a wider trim. You can run this through your sewing machine and tr and, and sew it down. Um, and, and to make a, a permanent trim. So you don't even have to braid it or uh, crochet it. You can just twist it and catch it with your sewing machine if you have a sewing machine. If you don't, you can also take this same... I'm going to get the book out of the way just for a second. You can take this same piece of lace. You can take your, your uh, ribbons that you've gathered your fabric you've got gathered and you can just twist it and glue it twist and glue all the way down the line um, to make a trim the only thing is that it's going to be a little bit um, thicker feeling because it's going to have that glue base underneath if you hot glue it but this gives you a really fun unusual trim again just by twisting your cords or your fabric or your lace on top of this piece and gluing so just twist and glue all the way down and you have a nice different trim again that has cost you pennies and does that look sharp so these are just a few methods i'm showing you with this book Okay, so these are some of the things that I've chosen um, that I may consider putting on this book. I'm a little bit undecided at this point yet. I'm going to cut this down. And don't worry, I use all this stuff at the end of the day anyway. So even if I cut it off the roll, it gets used. So that's just some of the things that I've chosen for this book. But there will be other things. So I'm going to put this aside and go on to the next one.
The next book I have on the table is the one where I've um, I've just glued the fabric to the front and the back. I'm still undecided as to whether or not I want a doily around here, um, but I'm going to give you some different ideas. I this is a purchase trim, although I probably bought this at a, a, you know a thrift shop or off of something. But no, this is this is definitely a new trim, so I probably bought it at a thrift shop. So I can add something like this to the edge of my book. That covers up the, the rough edges of the red by hot gluing it right down to the top, all the way around the top of the book. I can also add it on the bottom. And if you don't have enough, like I don't, I barely have enough to do uh, one side of this, never mind, yeah, one, one across the top. It doesn't have to be the exact same. So I can have this across the top and then I have this little leftover piece. This leftover piece can become a focal point down here. So you can have your trim across the top. Sorry, this isn't going to look perfectly good. But instead of throwing this little piece away, I can make another little focal point here that I can add uh, other elements to it to create a fun little, a little piece, uh, decorative piece on, on top of the book. What do I do on the bottom? I've got another trim here. This probably came off of a pillow or off of something because this is used. So something like this can go across the bottom of the book. Um, I can add, um, I can, I can glue, um, sorry, not glue. I can stitch some beads onto here. I can, I can um, run a string of pearls across here, some chain. There's no um, stopping me from adding this into something. Now, you remember I took this. Um, I went back, actually, and, and made two more of these while I was off camera. This came off uh, a, another piece of this same material, and I went back and I fringed both sides of this. So I can add that along the bottom for a completely different look. And then I can add this on top. So this gives me a really nice finish along the bottom hot glues in place so it holds all of this in place you don't see that edge this was already finished nicely on the edge and I have this on the top I can embellish further with some gems some jewels some buttons um, handmade flowers um, lace trims all kinds of other additional trims something else I pulled out if you remember um, just before Christmas, when I did one of my thrifty hauls, I also talked about my friend Angie, who gave me this beautiful <sighs> heart-stopping ribbon. Uh, something like this would look really nice on the front of this book. And and I'm only using, you know, a small, small little piece of it if I use it. And yet that makes such a difference on the front of a cover. But it's too precious to put on this book. <laughs> I have to save it for something else. And I will show you methods of making this type of trim for your own use. So this, this is as well as, as much as it's elegant and beautiful, this is so easy to make yourself. Uh, we will have some, I will do some videos where I actually make some of this stuff because it's not hard to make. It really isn't hard to make. Um, but yet it's so effective as, as a finish to, to a journal. And this is something you can do. You can make snippet rolls that look, similar to this with by adding all kinds of things and using that as a way of embellishing your book and then still adding the trims on the bottom or the top um, depending on what it is you want to uh, you know what kind of look you want to have and how you want to finish it so going back to um, this trim again this this little piece here I can take and glue another trim on top of it and within, within nothing, this becomes another really pretty trim that I can use on my, on my journal made from the same fabric and a little piece of trim. If you don't have that, you can take a piece of ribbon and, and braid the ribbon and, or crochet the ribbon to, to um, go down the center. Let's, let's do a piece just to show you. Where'd my crochet hook go? Oh, well. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, so, so I can crochet a piece of ribbon and it doesn't have to be 
uh, perfectly formed because the whole idea is you want to create a little bit a little bit of bulk um, to go down the center of your of your uh, trim so I'm going to try and get one more out of here I, I didn't have a big enough piece of ribbon here to show you but nothing like crocheting on camera when you're not a crocheter but if you can imagine um, putting this down the center of your trim how you've created a whole different look and dimension um, just by adding a little piece of ribbon on the top don't have ribbon let's go back to the to the uh, wool I've got this wool I can twist and roll this wool um, to add an interesting trim I can take this ribbon and uh, put knots in it I, I love doing that and that always makes people uh, causes interest for people is uh, I, I put knots in it every oh about every inch and a half two inches if you can see the knots and and then I just glue the knots down so you have this loose piece that's hanging and you can you can even puff it up a little bit and and so then you've got this this um, piece that is dimensional that you can add on to your journal you can even just use this on itself to add on to your journal and create different uh, loopies to to finish off the edge of your journal so um, another thing you can do is is braid this down the center or or um, crochet it down the center that gives you a little bit more finished a little bit more bulk as well sorry I'm not really fast at this crochet thing but Jill where are you when I need you um, and and if you're not a crocheter just take your stuff to somebody you know that crochets and say just can you make me a hundred mile long uh, cord and they'll do it because they can do it in like 25 seconds and they, they can they love to show off that what they can do with their crochet so here's a, a nice crocheted piece and just look at that put onto there and again you have a different looking trim within seconds this doesn't cost a lot of money remember maybe 25 50 cents even if this was a dollar for a roll how much crocheted trim can you make and how much fringe you can make with um, this piece of fabric let's take the same piece of fabric because I have two of them here on the table and let's take a needle and thread and you can see I've already started and I'm using brown because I want you to be able to see my stitches and and see that my stitches are not perfect and I'm going to go in and out and continue up this piece all of these trims are also great for trimming on your pages on pockets so I'm just going in and out on this piece of fabric little pause and talking there but uh, and now I'm just going to gently start to pull it all together now if you if you have a sewing machine you can you can do all of this on the sewing machine gather up some lace some trims um, fabrics and make a finished edge on your piece just like that you want to get fancy add some gold trim down the center and look at the difference now your gold trim like I said can be gold um, crocheted threads it can be another another piece of gold fabric that you've braided um, it could be a gold ribbon that you've braided all of these things make this trim look so different and you can see I'm not using expensive uh, items to create this I've got this um, well I've got some pearls here you've all seen these pearls and these show up at the garage sale or at the uh, thrift shops um, in bolts now because people don't use them anymore for the crafts that they used to make them for now this you could hot glue in but it is putsky to do I like to just take a needle and thread and and uh, just uh, slip stitch it onto here so then you know it's on here well and what a nice finish that puts on your book just like that 
Um, you can add buttons. You you can add uh, small uh, silk flowers if you've got, you know, little tiny uh, rosette flowers. You can add um, uh, beads. You can, you can after you've uh, gathered this up, you can go back and stitch it with beads and stitch it with sequins. So again, these are all different trims that you can make uh, without spending a lot of money. A, a package of uh, sequins will cost you about a dollar at if you bought them brand new um, at the craft store or at your local dollar store. They come in all kinds of colors uh, and are easy to make nice little uh, trim edges on these things. So I've got this other um, flat ribbon here. Now this I bought probably again at a thrift store. Um, everything I bring home, I right away, um, uh, put onto cards. So, um, now this, a uh, flat tr trim, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of plain to put on the edge of your, of your book, but if you add it to, to something else, it makes your trim a little bit fancier. So I'm just using that same piece and adding that on top. You want to get a little bit fancier. Oop. Ideally find the end, but stitch on some beads on top. You can't buy that trim at the store. It is unique. It's one of a kind and only you have it. And you know, you could have it for one book. You could have it for 10 books. You can, you could sit down one evening and make a whole pile of this and then wrap it around a, a card and have it ready to go for when you want to make a book. So, so don't, um, don't just make it for one project. Once you get going, make some other colors and, and, but make yourself some yardage, you know, do two yards or three yards so that when you want to sit down and do a book, you've got exactly what you need for it. You can cut this up in pieces again and use it as trims on your journals, on your tags, on pockets on the inside. It could be a tab. You could cut a small piece and turn it into a tab. Very, very easy. And how beautiful that would be sticking out of the edge of your book with this little bit of glitter and gold to it. Really nothing to, to add to it. If you don't have pearls, use a fine gold ribbon or even use a fine gold thread as the final finale that you add on to here by, by uh, braiding three pieces of thread, gold thread together or um, crocheting a gold thread that you'd add down the center of here. Um, you could add some little rickrack or um, other ribbons and things. I don't have anything else here handy on the table. Yes, I do. I have this gold elastic cord that I could uh, hand stitch or machine stitch, whatever, you know, whatever works for you and uh, add that down the center to, to make even another little trim type of cord um, on your books. So that's uh, just an example with this uh with this book is uh, a few things. Now I also had some green ribbons here, brand new rolls and you can get these. Like I paid uh, 50 cents for these on clearance. Um, so I'm sure you can find these in, in your own uh, thrift shops or in your own um, craft stores where they put this stuff on sale. Well, I don't have to open both. I'll just open the one. Same thing. You just take it off of the roll. And crochet it or braid three strands together or twist it, twist and glue, knot it. And there, I also have a ribbon braiding tutorial. If you go on my um, trims and embellishments tutorials, you'll see there is a ribbon braiding uh, tutorial that you can look at. I'm just going to make a little bit of yardage here or not yardage inches, inch, inches. <laughs> Would that be the correct way to say it? Okay. That's enough to get you going here. And so I can take that same, um, braid or a fringe and add this into it for a completely different look. Hope you can see that good. So that's all I'm going to show you with this book.
And all I do with my trims is I hot glue them on. I've got, got to get this needle out of here because otherwise I will stab myself with it later on today. I know it. All my trims are hot glued on because then, or stitched on if I really feel that I can stitch them on. And um, I'll leave that out here as well. So I don't think I need to show you how to hot glue them on. And then my last book that I'm going to show you is this one. Yeah, I really went down the rabbit hole for this. Okay, so I have this uh, beautiful fringe trim. I've got a baggie of stuff here, some um, red fibers, some green. This is green raffia ribbon. This is some fringe. It's very thick, heavy fringe. And then I have this uh, tassel trim. Now, of course, this tassel trim is beautiful. It's got burgundy in it. It's got a little bit of that gold in there. Like if I glue that across the top of the edge, what a difference that makes to this book, eh? It just takes, it takes it to a whole new level of richness. Um, again, I can use some of it in the center to make a focal point, but I'm going to be doing that nesting uh, book on top. So, so I'm going to save the, the center of the book for after. Um, uh, but all of these trims, um, you know, can be added to the top, to the bottom. I can cut the tassels off of this and, and just use the trim this way along the bottom. Just plain without the tassels. Um, so there's the trim. I've got this beautiful um, long fringe. If I can find the end of it. Now, believe it or not, I picked this up at a thrift shop, too. And this must have been how it was tied, because this is not something I would do to tie or to close fringe, is use a paper clip. Okay. Well, we'll work without that. So when you, when you buy a uh, fringe like this, it's always got this bottom thread on there that you pull off uh, to, to um, undo it. I, I'm going to just try to undo a quick piece here. It's usually you grab one end and it comes right off. But just because I want to show you that, it's not going to happen, right? Okay, I can just pull it out for now. Usually it comes out much easier than this. <laughs> Funny the things that happen when you're on camera that, you know, Murphy's Law, what will not happen will not happen. Or however you want to say it. What, what can go wrong will go wrong. Anyway, this, this fringe makes a beautiful trim as well, right? going across the top. Now this is the, this is the one that you'd have to purchase or, or try to find at a thrift shop. You may not find it in time to do your book, but it is something that you can find if you want to spend the money on it. Um, you can have it trim at several lengths. You could have it trim down the bottom or along the side of your book, however you, you like. Um, so I've shown you those two trims. And then there's this stuff. Now this is really thick heavy trim. But um, it's for upholstery. And if you just pull the ends of it, um, you can undo this. And this you find on the edges of cushions. So if the cushion is a dollar and you're going to get two yards of, of this trim on here, take apart the cushion. Because nine times out of ten, the cushion's probably made with upholstery fabric, so you can even cover a book and have the trim to finish the edges of it. Now, I'm, I'm trying to... Here we go. You know, when you don't want this stuff to unravel, it unravels like nothing. Um, but just because I want it to unravel, of course, it's going to be difficult. But it does come apart usually quite easy. This in itself can be a nice uh, trim to put down the center 
of a braid or of a fringe, I mean. So have a look at how that looks. Isn't that gorgeous? And it's, it's only a few inches and then all of a sudden you've got a foot. Um, so it doesn't take much to undo this stuff and have lots left over. And in no time at all, I would have enough to do my entire book. And it's exactly in the colors that I like. Um, so, so it's something that I can use by, by fringing some type of material or making some, some, uh, gathered, uh, fabric trims and having this go down the center of the, of the trim. And it can go along the edge of your book as well. Again, I've picked out fibers that are of matching color and I've got this, uh, ribbon, this, uh, raffia ribbon. Just going to find the end of that. And I'm going to use double length again. And this raffia ribbon, which it's kind of, it's, it's, uh, kind of, uh, crunchy. It's not real raffia. But if I crochet these two together or braid them, it creates another fun, very airy, very slippery. And it's total items that you, you don't expect that you can use for making your creations and creating trims that no one else will have. And this is only a scratch of the surface, as I said, of the different trims that I will teach you how to make this summer. Uh, you know, I can't teach it all in an hour. I can't teach it all in, in a day, but in no time at all, I've made this braided trim and it's got a little bit of green, but it's mostly burgundy, but it just gives you a hint of green on there. And if you look at this along the edge of my book, it's a beautiful finish and all I have to do is hot glue that on. It gives you this nice fuzzy edge along the edge of the journal um, that is really attractive and, and uh, ha adds a little bit of airiness and a little bit bohemian style to it. Um, and that same trim, if I, if I take it down this, this piece of fabric fringe that I made, what a different look that gives you. for a fun, I hope you can see a fun trim. Okay. And then down the edge of that book, oh, that looks gorgeous. And, and I know it's something that I could easily use. Uh, and I can use this fabric on here because it's got a bit of greens in it. So it would complement very nicely in the colors here. So that might be something that I might consider using. Another thing you guys might have in your stash and you don't even realize it is rickrack. So if I take a piece of rickrack and you see this at, at the thrift shops all the time and, and it's very inexpensive to buy in the craft section or, or in your, uh, your local craft store, but even that going down the center of a fringe makes a little bit of difference. Add some gold threads in there and you've really got something just like that. So it's just a little bit to change it don't like the color how about this one this one matches it very nicely add some beads stitch on a couple of buttons all the way up and down and you've got a whole new look what else can you do with this fringe trim i mean this is a piece of fabric this was a piece of fabric the same fabric that's on my book stitch buttons right down it stitch beads right down it make it into a snippet roll uh, cut off pieces of lace, trims, um, add a bead, add a button, add a little image. You can add all those different things on making just a thinner snippet roll or a thinner, thinner snippet piece and adding that down the side of your book. So this is just a few ideas that I've given you. And yes, you can use the expensive trims. Sure you can, but I, I can make the the trims look just as nice without spending money on this but yes if you're out there and about keep your eye open for this stuff it does show up 
everything I've I've bought, most of it is from the thrift shops. Um, I very seldom buy brand new stuff unless it's really something special. Uh, look for clothing that you can remove the trims off of them. Um, look at uh, how you can cut up fabrics and strips and make snippets. Um, you can take your snippet rolls and cut it into thin strips and add pieces of your snippet rolls right onto your journals. So I'm not going to show you the finished books uh, or, or glue one together for you right here on camera because, um, I, you know, I don't want to make that decision in a half an hour as to what I want to use. I've, I've picked out a few things, but I'm going to play around and make some stuff and I will show you what I've made and, and how I did it and, and because I will show you with extra samples. That, that I can assure you I will do. I will not use the expensive trims on these books, even though I have it, because I want to show you that you can create your own stuff very easily without having the expensive tools. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can sew by hand. If you don't have a crochet hook, you can braid. So these are just options. And you know, there's the good old needle and thread and taking your time. If you, if you want to create a snippet, you can hot glue it or, or glue it with your glue gun or staple it. You know, as long as the staples are pushed in nice and tight and a staple from the backside, um, you can, you can bury the staples right in, into your journals as well. So don't, you know, there's no, uh, reason that you cannot make a beautiful trim without having all the, the tools and the equipment and the fancy uh, fabric stuff to, to make it with. You can make these things and, and make it your own. And, and it all goes back to, again, how I feel about, you know, you can go and buy the fancy trims all you want, but so can everybody else. But the fact that you make your own trims no one will ever make the same trim that you have. And it's unique. It's, it's a part of you. It's saved you some money. Although, you know, making your own trims does take time, but there are so many possibilities. And I would love, uh, as part of this, uh, this, uh, project that you actually make something handmade trim of your own to put on your book. And if you do, please share it with me and, you know, in any way you can, whether you send me a picture through Facebook, um, whether you send me a picture through messenger or, or we, where it shows up in a video, I would love to see what you do for, for trims and for making something instead of going out and buying expensive stuff. Um, you also have in your stash, probably those little glitter stones, you know, they came on a whole sheet, um, uh, you know, the little glass beads, those would look nice down the center of here, or the little pearls, uh, things that you use for scrapbooking, that kind of stuff. Um, so keep that in mind as well. The only thing is, is don't depend on the adhesive that comes on the back of them to, to, uh, attach them. Just take your time and, and actually glue them down. So you know that they're going to stay down in your book, but yes, that's it for today's video. I, I think this is enough for you to get started on uh, trimming your book and remember all the scraps, all the little bits, even if it's a piece that's this big, don't throw it away because we will use those things. I never throw things away. Like this is the edge, the hem edge of, uh, this very same fabric. And that's sitting here on the, on the desk because I know I'm going to actually use this in my, in my, um, uh, book eventually. So all those little bits and pieces will be part of part 11 and 12 when we start embellishing and adding more interest into the book to, based on your covers. So hopefully by next week, you will see some type of finished cover for me on my books. Um, and I will have all the explanations as to what I used and how I used it. I will not be using these expensive trims, even though I have them, I will save them for other journals and that there's no shortage of journals for me to make so I can get to use them on other things. But I will show you all different trims that I have made by hand myself with enhanced with ribbons or fabrics, uh, and, and fibers that I have, you know, in my stash, but these are all very inexpensive things. You know, that, uh, I'm not using expensive stuff to do this with, uh, I've lost that needle and thread on my, my table again. Well, here it is. <laughs> I'm going to get poked with this. Um, but, but yeah, I'm not using expensive items. So I will make sure and have a little bit of on hand of everything that I used to create the, uh, embellishments for my books. So that's it for today. I hope you have uh, lots to work with and, and lots of um, ideas floating through your head. I am excited for you. These books are getting closer to being done, although still a long ways to go. Um, but I wish you all a very creative week and um, 
get started on those embellishments. And I will see you here again next uh, Monday. Bye for now.